Well, good morning and thank you for joining us. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements and then we're gonna get to hear from Pastor Brandon this morning. Uh, first off, please text that number on your screen. Uh, just a way for us to know how we can be praying for you, we can fill you in on some things coming up with the church, but it would just really be great if we could connect with you in some way, so please text that number. Uh, things coming up, we do the first week of August, our 12-step programs will be starting up. So if you want more info on that, reach out to the church office or uh, get a hold of Pastor Nick is the person to talk to about that. But such important ministry. So if you know someone who could really benefit from that, or, or maybe you could, uh, make sure you reach out to us and we will get you dialed in with when to be here. Uh, we also, as crazy as it is, August 8th sounds far away, but it's literally two weeks from today. Uh, that is our upgrade Sunday in our children's ministry. So our kids will be moving up in grade officially that day with the school starting really quick after that. I know it's crazy. We've already pretty much made it through summer. But uh, so be praying that that's just a great Sunday. Uh, we hope you can make it to that. And then as always, we have a lot of things coming up in the fall. I know we've already been talking some kind of trunk or treat over in October. We have, as even crazier as it is, been talking about Christmas. The time to see all, or the place to see all of the different events we have coming up in the immediate future is on our website. So make sure you go to our events page on there. Uh, any questions you may have about something on there, feel free to reach out to the church office or message us on Facebook or get a hold of us in some way. And we'd love to answer those questions. I know our youth group has a lot going on as well. So make sure you check out our pages. Well, I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to get to hear from Pastor Brandon. God, we love you and we just thank you for this morning, this chance to to worship you together. And I just pray that through this whole series, we'd realize it's, it's really about allowing you to work through us. That's how we're going to influence the world for the gospel the most. And so God, I just pray that you would help open our eyes by looking, as we look at different people throughout your word, uh, people that did that, that, that you would help us in, in reflecting those same things. God, just speak through Pastor Brandon now. Help us to walk away reflecting the gospel to those around us even better. We ask this in your name. Amen. Good morning, church. Happy to be back with you here at Tulare First Baptist Church online service. Thanks, Matt, for the intro. Really appreciate that. Uh, we are in a series called uh, Being an Influencer. And Bob alluded to last week, and I work with students at the school. And let me tell you, uh, five, ten years ago, I would ask kids who their heroes were. And it was either sports stars, possibly movie stars, uh, people that most people would know. But now there's these things called uh, social media influencers. And these social media influencers seem to be the big thing. And so if you have kids or grandkids or you are a kid and you're watching, uh, you kind of already know what an influencer does, man. They influence people. Uh, the definition of influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character development or behavior of someone or something. So if you have an effect on someone else or their development, then you're an influencer. So if you're a friend, if you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, if you're a teacher, if you're a coach, if you're a boss, if you're an employee, if you're uh, whatever, you obviously have some influence over someone or something every day of your life. And so we really want to kind of lean into that and say, uh, what does it mean for us as Christians to be influencers? And Bob last week talked about Barnabas. And he was an influencer because he was an encourager. As a matter of fact, his name meant encourager. And he was an encourager to Paul, the Apostle Paul, who wrote a ton of the New Testament that we read today. Uh, and this week, I want to back up in Acts chapter 9 and introduce you to another person who had an influence in Paul's life. And his name is Ananias. Now, Ananias and Paul are two very different people. And where Barnabas, however, chose when Paul came to Jerusalem and all the disciples were kind of leery of Paul and, and what he was going to do or whatever because he had a reputation, uh, Barnabas chose to approach Paul and, and be a friend to him and encourage him. Ananias, on the other hand, is different than Barnabas. Ananias was called to have some influence over Paul's life called by God, as a matter of fact. And we're going to look at that today. What does it look like to be called 
to influence. What does that mean as a difference? uh, Because every day we get to choose, like I want to influence my kids. I want to be a good influence on Pastor Bob and I want to be a good influence on Pastor Matt. And and we choose sometimes who we want to be influencing, uh, who we want to influence. But this is a situation, and this will happen in your life at times, where actually God kind of taps you on the shoulder and says, I need you to go influence this person. Or you'll find yourself in the situation, maybe you didn't even know God tapped you on the shoulder, but He's put you in a situation where you get to be an influencer. And so we're going to kind of look at that and kind of peel the layers back on that. So walk with me really quick as we talk about what it means to be called to influence. Number one, I want to def- define the word disciple, because when I'm using the word influencer today, or, or to be an influencer, I, I want you to think of a disciple. And a disciple is uh, someone who has decided to follow a person. They've assessed the person that they're going to follow, and they've deemed that person worthy to be followed, not only to follow them, but in the New Testament sense of disciple, and what it means for us today is you are choosing to become like that person. You're a disciple of that person, and we are disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus. And and so when I'm talking about kind of being an influencer today, I'm kind of leaning towards that word disciple as well, that we are all called to be influencers. And, and Bob touched on that a little bit last week, that we are called to be salt and light and to influence the culture around us. And so I kind of want to stick with that. So let's look at Paul and, and Ananias really quick. Um, have you ever been afraid to do something first? I, I know I have. I know there's been times in my life where uh, whether it was with my cousins when I was a kid and maybe we were out in the backyard and doing tricks on the diving board or on the trampoline and uh, we're trying to outdo one another and you're going to try to be the first one to do a trick. It's sometimes scary if you've never done it before uh, when you're the first one to do it. Um, well, Ananias is going to be the first person to talk to Paul as a believer um, after Paul meets Jesus on the road to Damascus. And, and if you know anything about Paul, which we're about to stop and pause here and read the account of what happens to Paul, and we're going to pick up with Ananias, you're going to see why it might have been scary to be the first person to meet with Paul. So let's look at Acts chapter 9, beginning in verse 1 and 2, and then we're going to kind of, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, and then we're going to pick up with Ananias' encounter with Paul as well. So Acts chapter 9, verse 1, Meanwhile, Saul who we know as Paul most of the time, because midway through Acts, they start calling him Paul all the time. But Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, which were the followers of Christ, they called them the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. So Paul is on a journey to persecute It says murderous threat, so you can read into that whatever you want a murderous threat might be. But he was giving out murderous threats, but he was definitely rounding up Christians, arresting them, taking them back with his authority that he'd been given by the church or the the synagogues in Jerusalem to bring them back and imprison them. That's who Paul was, known as Saul at this time. And so Saul is kind of a bad guy. He was actually, if you go back to uh, the story of Stephen... Uh, and Stephen was the first martyr for the faith, Paul was there at that point where Stephen was martyred, where he was put to death for his faith in Jesus, where they stoned him. And Paul was there. So here the same thing is going on. And on the way to Damascus, he has this encounter with Jesus, where Jesus appears to him. Uh, Saul even falls off of his donkey. Um, And Jesus tells him, why are you persecuting me? And then he blinds him, and then the men that Saul is with, they lead him into Damascus where he sits for three days waiting because he has no idea what's going to happen next. And he's waiting for what's next from God. And during that three days, God encounters Ananias as well. And picking up in verse 10, In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Paul, for he is praying, I'm sorry, named Saul. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come uh, come and place his hands on him and restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about the man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. 
And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all in your name, all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. And, I, and I'm assuming that Ananias was one of those disciples that he continued to spend time with. Now, a couple things here. There's two people being called by God in this passage. The first one is Saul. He is called by God. As a matter of fact, he's called off of his donkey. He's knocked off of his donkey because the voice of God just does that. Can't explain that one. Um, but he's literally hunting down Christians to arrest and possibly even murder. Just going to put that out there. And there is one that is described as a disciple, Ananias. And the interesting thing is, Saul becomes very important to the rest of God's plan of how he's going to propagate his gospel, how he's going to spread the gospel throughout the known world at that time. Ananias, on the other hand, this is the only time in Scripture we see him. This is it. Before this, we don't see him. After this, we don't see him. One, like I said, goes on to write a large portion of the New Testament that we read today. The other really seems almost insignificant in Scripture, other than this one thing that he does. One has a dramatic encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, and the other, interestingly enough, if you go back and read it, because a lot of times we gloss over this, um, it's not very dramatic. As a matter of fact, Ananias acts like this happens to him every day. He said, yes, Lord, I'm here. And he just kind of has a conversation with God at that point, like normal. So you have two very different encounters. So I want to break down Ananias' encounter, encounter, though. I want us to really look at what Ananias does in his first response. His first response is, here I am, Lord. In other words, God calls on Ananias and he says, I'm here. Which makes me think he's first of all listening and he recognizes the authority of God over his life because he refers to him as Lord. He says, here I am, Lord. His second response starts again with Lord. He says, I have heard many things about this man. So he's going to explain to God who this Saul character is that God wants him to go minister to. And I think this is very normal. Um, I think we do this, right? I think if we read in Scripture and God's asking us through, the, through, the, through His Word for us to do something, I think a lot of times, if I'm honest, I step back and go, I don't know, God, if you really know me that well. I don't know if that's really what you want me to do. I don't know if that's how you want me to approach this situation, right? And so I think, we're, I think this is a very human interaction with God. I think that's what, what we're reading here is that Ananias has this relationship with God where he hears God speak and he refers to him as Lord. He's the authority. However, he has some things and some questions that he wants to ask. Now, the other thing he says when he says, I've heard many talk about this man. I think in life we do that, right? We could read God's word, we could hear God's word, but then we go back to the other voices in the room, right? Or sometimes we seek out voices that tell us what we want to hear versus what God is telling us. Other times we'll seek out voices that actually affirm and confirm what God is telling us. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so he could be fearful, he could be questioning God, he could be simply just clarifying what God's asking him to do, and does God realize who this man actually is and what he's, what he's actually was coming to Damascus to do? And so God allows these type of questions. I think one of the things I want you to know as an influencer, as a disciple of Christ, is that God wants you to interact with him. He wants you to have these conversations with him. Uh, and uh, he, we, But we don't want to allow fear from keeping us uh, from obeying God and what his word is. And, and obviously... Ananias could be afraid here, he could be clarifying, but no matter what, Ananias' final response is that he departs 
immediately, and he goes to do what God's called him to do with Paul, with Saul. And so he accepts the call, and he obeys the call, and he does it immediately. And I think that immediately is important because a lot of times when we feel the call of God in our lives, if we give it too much time, we can talk ourselves out of doing what we feel like God's called us to do. And I use the word feel kind of loosely. I think sometimes it's clear what God's word is calling us to do, and sometimes uh, it's unclear. And I think there's a different situation. I think here it was a clear call on Ananias' life and what he was supposed to do. So what can we learn from this as an influencer, though? So we see Paul, we see Ananias, we see this whole situation. Both men called um, Paul kind of forced into obedience at this point because he's blind. He's sitting in a room for three days. Ananias has to obey God's call and go. So that's where we're going to focus today on, on these next four points as to what an influencer should do. So an influencer who is called, number one, will know God's voice and respond to it. Verse 10. And we see this in Ananias' life. He hears his voice. He responds to God. Here I am, Lord. And, and again, I, I can't over... I can't. Uh, lean into this enough as, as far as this being almost normal for Ananias. Okay, There's no exclamation point in the scripture. There's no like sign of fear and awe when this happens. He just like basically says, here I am, Lord. So I think when we hear the call of God in our life, we need to be so enamored in our relationship with God that we're not surprised that he's actually asking us to do something or that he's calling on us to do something. I think it should be a normal part of our life that we open up the Word of God and that we read it. And then when we see something and the Holy Spirit convicts us of something, we should be, oh, here I am, Lord. What, what, is, what of this do you want me to do? Right? So an influencer is called, will know God's voice and respond. In John 10, 27, 28, uh, basically we see Jesus telling us, my sheep will hear my voice. They will know my voice. They will obey my voice. Right? So if we're God's children, if we're His sheep, then we'll hear His voice and we'll know it. Second verse I put there is Mark 1, 16 through 20, where Jesus asked the disciples to follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And at once, the disciples heard the voice of God, and they responded by dropping their nets and following Jesus, and their lives were changed forever. So again, what we see in this situation with Ananias is very consistent with what we see in all of Scripture with the disciples and those people who would influence the first century church and influence the, the, the body of Christ even today. We still go back and see these lives changed and transformed. Secondly, an influencer who is called uh, will clarify the call and seek confirmation from the Lord, as we see in verse 13, when he actually had that conversation with God. And he talked to God and said, Are you sure? Do you know who this guy is? And, and the thing is, is that I think it's important for us, especially in this day of time where everybody's kind of, Sometimes we're, we're moved by emotion. Even in the church, we're moved by emotions and feelings. And those are all good things because God created those things. And we need to be attentive to those things. But we also need to step back sometimes and make sure that it's the Holy Spirit. We need to make sure that God's Word confirms and clarifies what the call in our life is. And, and really clear and, and simply, uh, if we look at 1 Corinthians 13, God is not a God of disorder. So one of the things we can look at is, is what we're being called to do going to bring unity or is it going to bring division uh, is it going to bring clarity or is it going to bring confusion because if it's from god it's definitely going to be clarifying it's going to not cause more confusion it's going to bring people um, together at least together for the purpose for his purposes i, I realize that um, even in christ christ himself causes division right so i'm not saying that what we say is not going to offend people or things like that but i am saying that when we're called by God to go minister to people and to influence people, it's going to bring peace and joy to their lives more than likely. Okay, So we need to be looking at those things. Uh, and here's the one thing I can guarantee you that God has called us all to. The simplest form, we're called to follow Jesus and we're called to grow in godliness. So if you really want to know what your calling is as a disciple of Jesus, it's to grow in the likeness of Jesus and to grow in your godliness. And the Holy Spirit actually does most of that work as you spend time in the Word, as you spend time in fellowship with other believers, and as you spend time in fellowship with God. He transforms your life so that you can then influence others. As a matter of fact, Kevin DeYoung in his book, Just Do Something, said it this way, the end of the matter is this, love for God, obey the Scriptures. Think of others before you think of yourself. Be holy 
like Jesus and love Jesus. And as you do those things, as you love others, as you love Jesus, as you practice holiness in your life and, and becoming more and more like Jesus, as you do this, whatever else you like, do whatever else you like with whomever you like, wherever you like. And you're going to be walking with God. You're going to be fulfilling the will of God because you're becoming like Jesus. You're loving like Jesus. You're ministering to people like Jesus. You're putting others before yourself like Jesus. And so you can do that anywhere. So it doesn't matter what college you go to. It doesn't matter what job you have. It doesn't matter who you're going to work with or who you're going to minister to. As long as you're walking with God, growing in Christ, becoming more like Him, and God's going to use that to influence other people. That's how it works. It's not necessarily about the specifics. It's about who you're becoming like. And again, as an influencer, we need to first and foremost be influenced by Christ. And then we take that influence and we transfer it to others and we want to be influencing others. That's what influencers who are called by God do. Third, an influencer who is called will go where he is called to go. Okay? Ananias is called to go talk to Peter. I mean, Paul, sorry. And so it's important that he goes to Paul. Paul is in a room three days waiting. So it says that Ananias goes immediately. So I don't know what their time difference is, what happens there. But we know that Saul is in the room for three days. And we know that Ananias goes to Saul. So if he's going to influence Saul, he has to go to where Saul is. Saul's not coming to him. Saul's been given instructions to stay and wait. And so we have to go where God calls us to go. And every disciple in Scripture, I didn't put a verse here because all you got to do is go read the New Testament. Every disciple in Scripture, most every Old Testament character who fears God, that's the way they're described in the Old Testament. Those who feared God did what God told them to do. They went where God told them to go. Abraham was told to move. He moved. Moses was told to do something. He did it. Noah was told to build an ark. He did it. The disciples, if you follow their lives, all of them, with the exception of Judas, <clears throat> excuse me, with the exception of Judas, lived this out in their lives. Most of them followed Christ even in death. John is the one who wrote Revelation. He wrote that on the island of Patmos because he was, he was put away on an island. So he wasn't put to death, but he was put away where he was separated from his friends and family. And Jesus is our ultimate example of this. Ananias was doing nothing more than simply being like Jesus. Jesus did some scary stuff too. Jesus had to go to the cross. Jesus had to obey God's word. Ananias is simply doing that. He's trying to be an influencer who's called by God by obeying God so that he can have an influence on this man named Saul. And finally, an influencer who's called will confirm God's word in other people's lives. And guys, this is so important. This is so important because a lot of times we, we really kind of question what is our influence ultimately supposed to do? And I really believe what we see here in Ananias, when God calls us specifically to influence people, it's to confirm what he's told them to do. And before Ananias arrived and saw Paul, Paul had met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And he wasn't given a lot of information. And so I think what happens, we have to kind of read between the lines here a little bit. I think Ananias went and explained who Jesus was to Paul. I mean, Paul met him on the road to Damascus. He called him Lord. He didn't recognize him, though. He's like, who are you, Lord? Right? So if you go back and read it, Paul's confused. And he's in a confused state. And so he needs someone to come confirm what's just happened and affirm him in his new calling. And that's what Ananias is there to do. He is there to affirm God's calling in Paul's life. <coughs> so as an influencer who is called by God, we will confirm God's word to others. We can do this in a simple way. 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that all Scripture is God-breathed, useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So one way we can confirm for our people that we influence is by teaching them. We can confirm God's Word is true by teaching them what God's Word says. We can confirm God's Word is true when they get out of line. We can rebuke people, one another, in Christ, in love, right? These are the things we can do for each other if we're really trying to influence each other towards being kingdom builders, right? To be influencers, to be disciples of Christ. 
You see this in Scripture. You see this between uh, Peter and Barnabas, uh, Peter and uh, Paul later on. You see them kind of in conflict with each other, trying to get, trying to get each other to follow Christ closer. Uh, this happens all the time in Scripture, and that's one of our roles as influencers, is that we need to influence not necessarily our culture in this, in this sense, but other believers. We need to help each other in this, in this walk with Christ. We're not meant to do this alone. We're meant to do this in community, and this is what Ananias does. And again, it says at the end of the passage that Paul, Saul stayed after taking some food, he regained his strength, and then Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. And I think what you see there <clears throat> in the end is you see uh, Ananias leaning into his influence, the other disciples that are there in Damascus leaning into their influence, spending time with Paul or Saul, answering probably all of his questions. I'm sure he's enamored with what he's learning uh, because he has the whole of Scripture in his background with the Old Testament because Paul was a Pharisee and he was a smart guy and he was a well-studied guy. But now he's seeing the culmination of all that in these guys who are now influencing him for Christ. And guys, if we're going to be influencers in our world, I think this is what it takes. I think we have to know the voice of God and respond. I think we have to seek the confirmation from the Lord. We have to clarify that ourselves. And then we go to where God calls us. And then we, just like we clarified God's word for ourselves, then we become the confirmation and affirmation for somebody else's call. And I think it just is a circular thing that we just keep doing as we follow Christ and we love one another and we serve one another. We keep spurring one another on to perpetuate the gospel to the ends of the earth, which is ultimately our influence, right? Go into all the world, baptizing people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, because that's what a disciple, that's what an influencer who's called by God will do. And I can't wait to see you until next week, guys. Uh, have a great Sunday. We'll see you soon.